losing six matches in seven games gave Sri Lanka last place in the Tri-Series. With five wins world champion Australia secure their spot in best of three as the number one team. And New Zealand with four wins, give them the opportunity to play with Australia in the finals. Not sure whether both Australian opponents, giving enough pressure to them. In the previous game Australia easily beats New Zealand by five wickets with more than ten overs left to play. It's down on the ground, and it's a big six. Beautifully timed, Border looking to get to the pitch. Hit straight through that half volley, but it's straight over the fence. That goes for four, it'll be victory for Australia. Very good performance. Australian team bowled superbly, fielded well. Some good batting from Boom, Stephen War, Letter, Dean Jones, and able to coast to a very good victory. A very good victory for Australia. They get that must do powers again for their confidence, which has been growing in every match they've played this summer, and. They will no doubt go to Sydney, full of confidence, and just can't wait for the finals. So Team Sri Lanka fly back to Sydney, New South Wales to play their last game in Tri-Nation Series, as a day and night match. This is the 11th match of the competition, and this was scheduled to play on January 19th. The Sydney Cricket Ground host one game before that to Team Sri Lanka, in a day and night game, Sri Lanka lost to New Zealand by six wickets on that night. This is the one-day international number 496 and Mr. Steve Randall and Mr. Terry Prue was appointed as umpires. Sri Lanka made one change. They replaced their batting all-rounder Athula Samurai Skara with another debutant batting all-rounder Sanath Kalyuparuma. Australia in a strong position. Yet they only two changes, after beating Kiwis comfortably in the previous match. They rested their ace-fast bowler Craig McDermott and called Mike Whitney back to the side. Since Sydney is spin-friendly, they called back Tim May to the side and leaving out Simon Davis. Sanath Kalyuparuma got an opportunity to play his maiden one-day international. He was the 53rd Sri Lankan one-day cap and before this he played three test matches behalf of Sri Lanka against New Zealand in 1984. Sanath is an all-rounder and he studied in Nalanda College. After leaving school he joined in Bloomfield to play the first-class matches. He is a brother of Lalith Kalyuparuma, who played in Sri Lanka's first ever test match. Australian skipper Alan Border won the toss and chose to field first. Beautifully played. Lovely uh, struck cover drive there, a little uppish and uh, just for a second I thought it was blazing itself straight to the fieldsman. Quindon Karupu. and crop the stumps are out the ground all over the place Michael Whitney is struck oh what a blow for the Sri Lankans edged and taken at first slip by the skipper so Michael Whitney has struck again he's got both he's got a right hander on strike now there's not much doubt about that might have been about Guru Sinkers, but not now about Kaluparuma, who's uh, had his off stump. That's a good one, the educated shot, and that looks as though it'll go the whole way. That's a boundary. Open face deflection on the offside. Shrewd shot. Steve Waugh, bowling medium pace from the Paddington end. Slow ball once again, but it's gone fast to the boundary. That's another one. Beautifully timed, lovely placement. A few bounces and into the area under the side screen. That's a good shot. Played away back at a square. And it's running away down to the boundary. Will it just get there? Yes. Nice placement too. Gone fine, and that'll be four. There's a lovely leg glide. The man down there is just a little bit squarer. Then... Oh, it's 
got that one in the air. It's a six. It is. Well, hey about that. He's been hanging around and hanging around. And finally, hits Peter Tower over the fence for six. In the air. This man coming in from cover point, Jones. He's got it. Yurusinga batting for 101 balls. Loses concentration and is caught. Very good shot. Placement is excellent. No chance of cutting that off. Taylor just straying a little down the leg side. Oh, they're at it again, these two. Well, you want to wear crash helmets, that's for sure, if you want to get yourself in. Reckon. That's very, very good work from Steve Warren, Jeff Marsh. Uh, Juna Ranatunga has gone, he's the fifth wicket. Now Sri Lanka have a problem, and War has another wicket. And LBW, Banjo Murugali, LBW to Stephen War. We're into the 45th over. And we've been 10th there from Aravinda de Silva. That right off the meat. The first one might have come off the edge, but not that one. Dyer. It's difficult. Well, he made it. Got there perhaps a fraction too soon. There's a hard catch. Ravi's gone. Boone's caught him. Whitney at the end of his over triumphs again and uh, Sri Lanka now 162 for the loss of seven wickets it's cleared Whitney at mid-off and it's very well timed now there's a man at deep mid-off water shuffling his field on the offside three inside the circle he's hit that pretty well Marsh gets it by Jove, he's a very good outfielder these days, Jeffrey Marsh. And uh, it's a feature. And well taken there by Greg Dyer down the leg side. Ravinda De Silva having a dash at everything. And he was a bit unfortunate there if he'd have missed that. Quite. And that's an educated edge. And it'll bring a boundary. So a nice finish there for Champaka Ramanayaka. Under the tremendous pressure of bowling, Sri Lanka managed to score 188 runs after losing 9 wickets in their 50 overs. Aravinda scored 79 runs with the bat, spending more than 2 hours in the wicket including 7 boundaries, this was the highest score from a Sri Lankan batsman in this tri-nation. Guru Singha played the anchor role, he batted 137 minutes faces 101 deliveries and scored 37 runs with a boundary and one massive six. Apart from these two, only Arjuna and Roshan passed the double figure mark. From bowling department both Whitney and Wa achieved their best ever one day bowling performance. Specially Wa maintained his ability as an all rounder from game to game. Ravi Ratnayaka to Boone. David Boone is the striker. That's four runs right off the meat of the bat. It's got a tremendous pace off the bat, no chance for Karupa that time. Ravi Ratnayaka. Well caught. Well caught, Mahanama has caught David Boone. Oh, what a catch! Ab it's beautifully hit. to Dean Jones takes Australia to 2 for 38 oh he's gone out caught behind he's looking over 
Well, he's hit that over the top, down towards mid-wicket. It's bouncing away towards the boundary, and it's another four. It's beautifully struck. That's what you call a great cover drive. Standing almost to attention, a la Doug Walters. Stephen Moore hammers that straight through the cover region. He's out. Yes, he's gone. He goes once too often. And the young man, Mahanama, just... Anything can happen. Board is gone. What a catch. A magnificent court and ball. That been... And that makes it a bit harder. Greg Dyer has been bowled by Arjuna Ranatunga. It's six for 100. Dyer might have got an inside edge onto that. They need to score at 6.23 per over. That's in the air and into the gap. He's been looking for that gap down there. He hasn't actually middled it. So he'll settle for two. That brings up Valletta's 50. And uh, a very well played 52. That's beautifully hit by Dottermade. And out. Straight to uh, the cover fieldsman. And that was the wicket that Sri Lanka needed. They needed to break this partnership. They'd come together. It's to needing four runs from the last over. Here's LeBroy. Beautifully placed again by Peter Taylor. Beautifully driven. Even though they were not able to stop Australia, Team Sri Lanka gave a good fight in the field. Their fielding was phenomenal and Mahanama, Gurusinga and Aravinda took some splendid catches. Ramanuka lead the bowling department by taking three wickets. At one stage Australia was in deep trouble, losing their sixth wicket at the score of 100. Soon after that Dodimate, who was the second highest scorer of the innings, joined with the only recognized batsman Mike Villetta and built 73 for the seventh wicket. Valletta, the last man standing from Australia camp scored much needed 68 off 91 deliveries with just 1-4 one in 163 minutes. So, after some nail-biting performance Australia passes the winning margin with just 3 deliveries left to play. So, with that defeat Sri Lanka ended up their play in World Series 1988 edition. Out of 8 matches they won just 1, it was not something to celebrate but remind you that more than 50% of their losing games they gave some good fight back to remember which is a good sign for this young team, and for Sri Lankan future. With that match it led Australia and New Zealand to meet just one more time in group stage, before best of three starts. Mike Villetta, finally achieved the man of the match award. So that is the story of Sri Lanka team's story in World Series. In our next episode let's find out what happened to the Tri-Series and let's analysis deeper on Sri Lanka team's performance so far.